Hey, I think we're live. So welcome to the Flipping and Wholesaling Houses in New York show. I am Michael Pinter, where I teach you how to start flipping or wholesaling houses. And if you're already doing it, how do you grow your business? So I got a question. I get this question a lot. Um, sometimes I've answered it, sometimes I haven't. So um, what's the difference between wholesaling in, I think the question was in New York City versus upstate. So first of all, we have to talk about where exactly. And to be clear, I, I don't do a lot in New York City. I do near New York City in Long Island. And upstate, you know, you could say upstate is Orange County, right? So, but Westchester, Dutchess, Orange, Orange County, which are closer to New York City, are going to be similar to Nassau County. It's going to be the same thing. Um, when you go really far upstate, like the middle of nowhere, Finger Lakes area, that kind of thing, I have been told, I've never done a deal up there, but I've been told that some attorneys, some sellers there will work without attorneys. And it's really what's customary. So the question is, are you, how far upstate are you? And are you in a big city, right? Are you in Syracuse, Rochester, Binghamton? Are you in Albany? Are you in those cities? Or are you pretty far away from a major city? So the basic way that real estate works in 49 states is that a transaction takes place between a buyer and a seller. I'm a buyer, you're a seller, we agree on a price, I can give you a contract, sign it, and we're good. The way it works around New York City and lower uh, downstate New York is the transaction takes place between a seller's attorney and a buyer's attorney. When we agree on something, the seller's attorney has to then give me a con give, send the contract to my attorney and they negotiate it. Why that is, I don't even want to get into, I don't even know the answer to. That's the way it works. Technically, that is the way it should work in the entire state. But I've been told when you get near Canada, up there, really in the middle of nowhere, um, that things are less formal. Also, and I don't want to sound like a snob, but um, a lot of people that live in super rural areas are less sophisticated. So even if it is customary in an area to have an attorney, they may not even understand what that means. Um, so you have to take that into account. What are the differences? I mean, the differences are it's probably going to be a lot less money for ha per house. If they don't use an attorney, it's much easier to get in and out of contract. Assuming they don't have an attorney, you can sign a contract that has an inspection contingency which will let you get out of it if you can't find a buyer and you want to wholesale. Um, if, sorry, if, um, and these are things that don't happen downstate New York or around New York City. I never have an, any contingency in any of my contracts. I always have to either close or to assign because that's how it works in New York. I'm sure it is more, a lot more, less formalized in other parts of the state but I've spoken to people who do business in Rochester and they say they use an attorney every single time. So you got to ask yourself, right? So there's, there's a give and take here, right? Let's say I have a, I have a, I, I speak to a seller, I'm upstate New York, seller doesn't have an attorney or want an attorney. So is, is the ease of me getting this into contract and having an out clause worth the possibility, remote possibility, that this guy finds out I assigned that gets pissed off and says he wasn't represented? That's a possibility. Number one. Number two, if the if your attorney and your title company are typical for New York, what's going to happen if the seller doesn't have an attorney, or if you're not using an attorney even more so, the title company does not clear title in New York. The seller's attorney clears title. So like I have a situation right now, waiting, we're waiting months because of some crazy mortgage showed up on title from a weird... Um, it's like a GSE and a government-sponsored ent enterprise that won't give us any information. And, you know, they want a payoff, right? And we're negotiating with them on how, how we do that. They won't give us a payoff. And it, we don't think the mortgage even exists. But my point is, in 49 states, in everywhere else, if an issue like that shows up, the title company will work to clear the title. They may ask you to do it. Then you might have a transaction coordinator or TC that does it. But somebody is assigned to do it. In New York, it's really on the seller's attorney to do that. If there is no seller's attorney, it's going to fall on you. Now, you may say, great, I don't care. It's worth it. And it may be worth it. I'm not saying it is or it isn't. I always dreamed of doing deals without an attorney. And then I got my wish. I did two deals without an attorney. And I was a huge pain in my ass because I had to clear title issues that I didn't want to. And everyone just assumed that the seller's attorney would do it. And no one even asked if there was a seller's attorney. So, the way transaction happened in New York, and I assume every title company in upstate is similar, is that they're going to wait for somebody to take care of this. They're not going to do the title clearance, and they're going to have an attorney uh, disperse the funds. So if you're closing, you can have your attorney disperse the funds, but um, there's just a bunch of things that the seller's attorney does in a typical New York real estate transaction. They provide a checklist, a list of checks as to where 
the funds should be sent. And, you know, I, I had a situation where it was a brother, sister who had inherited a property and they told me when I first saw it, when I first went to the appointment, we want everything split 50-50. I did not remember that and I didn't think I had to remember it. Then they decided not to go with an attorney. They signed an affidavit that they're not being represented. And then we got to the closing, there was one check and they were furious at me. Furious. Didn't we tell you this? I didn't remember. Now, if they had an attorney, the attorney would have written a check, give 50% of the proceeds to the brother, 50% of the proceeds itself. That's just typical in New York. But they don't didn't know that. It's probably one of the only properties they've sold. And these are the kinds of things that come up when there is no seller's attorney. So, you know, what other differences between upstate New York? I mean, um, probably a lot more septic tanks and uh, cesspools. Now that shows up in nor northern New York because there's no sewers there. We don't have that. I don't have a lot of that issue sometimes in Suffolk County, but, but rare. Most places here have sewers. Uh, but that's it. The main thing is whether the seller is going to just jump straight to, hey, I need an attorney. Now, you got to understand something. Somebody from upstate New York may have lived downstate New York and then retired up there or gone there. They may just assume they're going to use an attorney anyway. But if, you, if you're picking an area in upstate New York to wholesale in and to market to, I would speak to attorneys in that area and just ask them, you know, is it typical that a seller is represented? How does it work here? What's typical? And most attorneys are going to tell you you're going to need an attorney, to be honest with you. But I would maybe call a title co local title company and ask them how is our most... In most real estate transactions, is there a seller and a buyer's attorney, or is it not done? Right. I would ask every title company anywhere near where you're where you're prospecting at that, and they'll be straight with you, right? Because they they almost like they almost like it when you when when there is no attorney and they can run the transaction. But if it's they don't do it, then they don't do it, right? Title company. You know, people ask me for an investor friendly title company. It just doesn't exist in New York. In New York, at least where I am, downstate New York, um, they don't run the transaction. They don't disperse funds. They don't really clear things. They're really just service providers. They're there to make sure all the taxes are paid and all the liens are paid. That's it. That's all they do. Pay off the liens, pay off the taxes, pay off the judgments, and move on to the next. Um, and everything else, the complicated stuff, dispersing the funds, uh, clearing issues, falls on attorneys. Buyer's attorney, sales attorney, uh, assigner's attorney. So that's how it works. So I would say it's different in every part of the state. You got to find out. For, I would find the title company near where you're doing. I would ask them what's typical. Is it ever done? No, things don't close with the attorney and you guys can run the transaction. Obviously, that makes it easier to get in a contract, out of contract. You can use your own contract. I don't use my own contract in downstate New York. The seller's attorney draws up the contract and sends it to me. Um, I wish I could use my own contract, but again, you have to be you have to be cognizant of what's typical for the area. So I hope this was helpful. If you're interested in all the ways I can help you, go to howtoflipnewyork.com. Um, sorry. Read up and, uh, links. Uh, that's too um, I'll be setting up some other links for coaching and for a stay a study at home program. I'm actually in 10 minutes at 11 a.m. doing a fourth lesson in my study at home program. I'm re recording them live. People attend live. Um, if you're interested, you can hit me up at uh, my office number or uh, my email. Um, and if you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe. If you're watching on any media channel, please click the thumbs up. The likes really help the algorithm and more people have been seeing my videos. Please ask any question you want. It does not have to be about the video you're watching. I think this question came from a completely different video than that, than that topic. Um, I really, I post five times a week and I don't know what to, I don't always know what to say. So uh, I, I, I welcome your questions. A, because it gives me a uh, subject matter to talk about, and B, because I want to answer them so that you understand what's, uh, so you understand better what's going on and I, how, and I want to help you. So um, I think that's it. Uh, thank you very, very much for watching. I really, really appreciate everyone who's been watching and liking the videos lately.